Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the tutorial on Breakout. So this is going to be a really difficult tutorial. I'm actually, this is for my Java CSA class. Um, my APCS principals kids who have done some processing, they could do this also if they want, but it's not going to be required. This is going to require quite a bit of object orientation object-oriented programming thought process because you're gonna have a lot of interactions going on between the ball and the walls and the bricks and all this other stuff that's going on um, kinda like we did in Flappy Bird but we're gonna be controlling it within all sorts of separate classes so um, I'm actually gonna do this one with proper Java so instead of just typing the class and the ints and stuff I'm gonna type private and public when it's when I want it to be and I'm gonna do this basically how I would do it in my Java class so although you can write classes in processing it without declaring them public or private it's just a bad um, habit so I said so I'm intending this for my CSA students so um, let's go first and look at the um, breakout versions that are online there's all sorts of breakout games that you can play and um, I just clicked on this one but basically what's cool about these games is that they've evolved from like one simple thing to like all sorts of different options okay and um, you can actually if you click on this there's like a there's one that's online I think this is it yeah so you basically go to the Google search and it basically makes a game out of your Google search so I, I really think it's kind of kind of funny but anyways um, this is basically what we're gonna build in processing and we're gonna do it kind of the same way we're gonna use a ball we're gonna have a paddle and we're gonna have all these bricks and we'll even change the colors and stuff like that but not the beginning we're just gonna make them but we'll do all the details and what's cool is if you go online and look at the different choices out there you can see all the stuff um, that you're gonna want to do so first I go into the before I go into the video let's look at how the ball is behaving first of all when it gets to the end it stops it starts on the paddle and you'll notice that where it hits on the paddle changes the direction so if I hit on the left side of the paddle it goes to the left and if I hit on the right side of the paddle it'll go to the right okay so that's kind of an important piece the other part is the way it interacts with the um, bricks so it doesn't just bounce straight off the bricks well, it bounces off the edge of the bricks. So if it hits off the bottom of the bricks, it comes down. If it off the side, it moves to the side. So we're going to have to not just determine when it collides with a brick. We're also going to have to determine what side of the brick it's hitting so that we can determine what to do with the velocity. Now, the good thing is, is we're going to basically use the same kind of code we did with the other ball examples that I did in class. So um, it's not going to be that hard to program the beginning. So the way I'm going to break this up is I'm going to do this as like a tutorial with like challenges. So I'm going to do top down coding. I'm going to basically give you like the idea of what we're going to do. And then I'm going to say, hey, pause the video and try to do this. And then if you really want to learn, the, the, the real way to get good at programming is to tackle these tasks on your own. But if you can't figure them out or you're just you just want to see how someone else would have done it, then you can go ahead and watch the rest of the tutorial. So let's start with um, the ball. Well, actually, let's just make the setup. So we'll just the setup for sure. We'll just leave. We'll kind of we'll, we're going to use kind of variables. So we'll do let's say um, we'll say 600 wide and 800 oh, size. We'll say 600 wide and 800 tall. We'll make it taller than it is wide, so it's kind of a rectangular shape. And let's go ahead and make a ball. Ball. Oh wait, let's do that in the. Uh, we'll we'll say it. we'll say a new ball. We'll start with the ball. I'm gonna break this tutorial up, and so <clears throat> the way I want you to do it is I'm gonna tell you what to to write, and then you're gonna go ahead and try to do that. So you can copy up to this point, but then I want you to try to do it on your own. So let's do ball. Well, first let's also do the background. So remember this. This makes it so that the background is constantly wiped clean. And so let's just do ball dot display. Okay. So that'll be a method that we're going to write. So we have to write the class ball. We have to write a method called display. And we're going to go ahead. And now that we've done that, we can say class ball. We'll call it ball ball. We'll declare the ball. We'll create a new ball, and we'll make the ball appear on the screen. So go ahead and open up a new tab. Call it ball b a capital b a l l. Okay, and we'll write class 
ball. And I want you to go ahead and complete this on your own. So you'll write the variables, you'll write the constructor, and you'll write the method. So at least the display for now. We'll add more methods later. So go ahead, pause the video, and try to get that and run it, and hopefully your ball will be up here. And also, make sure that the uh, ball is bouncing around the screen. So give it some sort of motion and see if they, you can do that on your own. So this is how I would do it. So hopefully you were successful, but I'm gonna use, first of all, I'm also gonna add the words private, so if you didn't, you don't have to, actually, but you, if you're in my CSA class, you should have already. But I'll do an X, and I'll do a Y, and I'll do a VX, and I'll do a VY. So I can do all of these declarations. And I'm also gonna do a diameter. So those are my variables, okay? so. Um, for the constructor, actually, I'm also going to make a. I'm going to make a boolean can move. So, this will be um, something that will allow me to keep the ball from moving once it hits the bottom of the screen. For example, okay. So we'll. If you didn't do that, you can add that now. So public. ball this is the constructor method but it doesn't take any parameters and let's go it doesn't really matter how you created yours you can change it or not but I'm going to just make one so I'll do width divided by two so the ball starts in the center I'll make the Y start at height we'll say minus um, oh I don't know uh, 70 let's do 70 and we'll do D equals 20 all right, so that looks pretty good. Um, I also have to give it a velocity, so let's go VX equals, um, we'll do a random number between negative five and five. This is just a start, so it doesn't really matter what you decided. I just wanna make sure it's a little bit random. And this one, I always want it to be going up, so that means I want it to have a negative velocity, so let's just set it to negative five. <clears throat> Actually, let's do negative 10, so it's a little faster. Okay. Now for display, hopefully you remembered how to do this, but basically it's a void method and it's just going to, I don't think it's gonna take any parameters, so it'll just be that. I'll say, um, we're gonna draw a circle. Well, I'm actually gonna write ellipse because I'm gonna convert this onto my website and for some reason the circle doesn't work on the website. So you gotta use the ellipses, which is the same. You just basically put X, Y, and you just have to put the diameter twice. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll say um, x plus equals vx, so it adds the velocity of the x to the x position, y plus or equals vy, and then we're gonna check for the walls, so we'll check the walls, and we'll say if um, x is greater than width minus five, so the minus five is just to keep it from getting stuck on the, the, the walls, and or x is less than five. So you don't actually need to put that five, you could just use zero, but um, sometimes my games get stuck on the on the walls, and so I definitely have learned to like give it a little bit of a buffer. So in all my collisions, you might see like a minus five or a plus five, and that just basically just shifts it over and it eliminates, or doesn't eliminate, but it reduces greatly the chance of it getting stuck on the wall and just moving back and forth. Um, so let's do this. Also for y, so if y is greater than height minus five, or y is less than five, by times equals negative one. Actually, ah, we'll leave it for now. I was gonna say, if, yeah, let's just not do that. We'll say if it hits the bottom, if, um, y is greater than height can move equals false. So I actually need to tell it it can move. And you're, you don't need to have this part right here, the can move part yet. 
but we're we're gonna start the game we're gonna want to make sure that it can't move until we tell it it can so I'm gonna basically have all of this stuff inside of the um, so all of this 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 is the update part and I'm only gonna have it allow it to do all of this motion if it's boolean can move is true so the way you write that is just write if can move okay so let's just go ahead and run that see how that works so the ball's moving around and then when it hits the bottom it can't move anymore okay um, let's also set the y equal to height minus d so it'll kind of stay there so it doesn't just run off the screen okay so boom stops right there so that pretty much takes care of the ball class so we'll also what we'll do is um, I'll actually start with the can move equal to false and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in my main function because to start the game I'm gonna have it so you click the mouse so we'll say if mouse pressed or sorry void mouse press so this basically is always always running you don't have to put this in the draw function it's just constantly looking to see if the mouse is pressed and I'll just say um, ball dot can move equals true so this is an easy way I've done the type of thing before where you can tell the ball you can move now so right now it's sitting there and I click the mouse it'll start moving and then of course when it hits the bottom it can't move again which is good because we're gonna reset the game okay all right, so that pretty much sums up the first video. So we've tackled the first part of our breakout. Can the ball move? Yes, if we click the button. All right, I hope you enjoyed the first one. The next one, we'll talk about the paddle. So get ready for that, and then we'll move on to the blocks.